when you place an, a transition element or a transition metal in water, you get different colored compounds, which is really cool. But what's even cooler and kind of weird is if you take something like vanadium, which has four different oxidation numbers, and you place it at each of the different oxidation numbers in water, you get four different colors. So why is this and what is happening? Well, we need to take a closer look at the electrons in the d orbitals to be able to explain why we get different colors and what is going on with those electrons. So let's get right into it. Now we know that with a transition metal, depending on the transition metal itself, it has electrons in the d orbitals. And if you have a transition metal ion, so say something like an M2+, so uh, just taking, for example, a titanium 2 plus um, metal, then when you have electrons in those 3D orbitals, and it's just the metal ion, all of those 3D orbitals have the same energy, or we would say that they are degenerate, which just means the same energy. However, if you now take that metal ion, so if we took a titanium ion and we put it in water, we're going to have the formation of a complex ion. So a complex ion where we take the metal and we surround it by, say for example, six different ligands, then the d orbitals are no longer degenerate and they actually split into two groups. They're for the octahedral shape, uh, three of the groups um, are lower energy and then two of the groups are higher energy. So you end up getting a splitting pattern for the d orbitals themselves. And so this diagram shows the splitting pattern for an octahedral complex ion. If you had, for example, a, um, a tetrahedral complex ion, you would get a different splitting pattern. But we're just going to kind of look at this splitting pattern because this is complicated enough. And so the reason why we get that splitting pattern in the d orbitals is because it's caused by repulsion between the electrons in the metal ion d orbitals and the lone pairs of electrons on the ligands. So in the octahedral shape, two of the d orbitals are going to point directly at the lone pair. So these ones are the d orbitals pointing directly. So they're pointing at the lone pair, so they become higher energy. The other three d orbitals are going to point between the ligands, so they become the lower energy. Okay, and this is where our splitting patterns come from. Now, when we take a transition metal ion complex, uh, so a complex ion, and we have an electron in one of these lower uh, d orbitals, and we shine white light on it, we can actually promote that electron. It will absorb the energy and it will get promoted up to one of the higher energy orbitals. So this one here is up here, and we are absorbing the light energy. And depending on how much the d orbitals have split, it's going to require differing amounts of energy or different frequencies or wavelengths of light in order to absorb and promote that electron to the higher set of d orbitals. It's kind of similar to what we saw when we looked at the absorption of light and electrons being promoted up 
to uh, higher energy levels in the hydrogen atoms. So the same sort of thing is happening here, except the electrons are being promoted within the d orbitals themselves. It's just now we have this splitting pattern. So they're being going from the lower set into the higher set of d orbitals. So when we shine light on complex ions, certain colors of light can be absorbed by the complex ions. So if, for example, we take a solution of uh, copper to sulfate and we pass white light through this copper to sulfate solution, the orange sort of end of the spectrum is absorbed. Um, and so when that orange end of the spectrum is absorbed, it's going to promote an electron from the lower set of d orbitals to the higher set. And then the light coming out of this solution is everything but that orange sort of end of the spectrum. So it results in a bluish kind of color, which is the complementary color to orange which is what we're seeing. So we're seeing everything but the light that is being absorbed. Now, for a substance to appear colored, certain frequencies of light in the visible ra range of the spectrum has to be absorbed. And we can use a color wheel to figure out, if we know the color of the substance, we can figure out the color that's being absorbed or vice versa. Uh, so for example, the copper sulfate solution appeared bluish, and that's because the orange or the complementary color to it is being absorbed. So if we had, say, a solution that appeared green, then the red light is being absorbed. Or if we had something appearing yellow, the violet light is being absorbed. And so that's telling you information about what um, particular color is being absorbed. And then it also tells you the wavelength, which then gives you information about the frequency as well as the energy that's associated with that absorption. Now, finally, the, the one thing we do need to point out here is that the formation of colored substances require that there is um, a partially filled D subshell present. If the D subshell is fully filled or if it's fully empty, there are no electrons that can be promoted up to higher, uh, the higher set of orbitals which means that you don't get this effect. So they essentially remain colorless. So a couple of examples here. If we have a scandium 3 plus, uh, remember scandium by itself is 4s2, 3d1. So it would have none of those electrons, which means that it has no electrons in the 3d subshell. So it is colorless. Uh, the same happens for titanium 4 plus, which is a normally a 4s2, 3d2. So taking four electrons away, again, you have no electrons left in that D subshell, which means that it's colorless. Uh, similarly, a copper plus ion or a zinc 2 plus ion, both have fully filled 3D orbitals. So they both have 3D10, which means that when they're fully filled, they are also colorless because there are now no places to promote electrons up to higher, the higher set of D orbitals. So using the color wheel, we can figure out uh, the different light absorbed, we can figure out what color we should expect to see, and we can explain why the colors arise due to the splitting of the d orbitals themselves. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.